something to say. Hello everybody, how are you doing today? My name is Charlie. You might know me better as sci-fi fantasy writer C.E. Dorset, and I went I went away for a little bit. And it's only part what you're thinking. Okay, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about what actually happened because it it I just I don't want to relive things, but let's just say there were a lot of problems that arose this November that required way too much of my attention and it was tricky it was one of the worst periods i've had in a very long time and don't worry i'm fine it, it's not directly related to me it was circumstances in my life that kind of wheeled out of control very quickly and well it derailed a lot of things and I knew I needed to keep myself from falling into a depressive funk, which, as those of you who have been longtime listeners know, is my go-to for all bad situations, <laughs> is just to go into a self-destructive downward spiral. And I did not want to have that happen this through, throughout this process. And so I had already said that I was going to do National Novel Writing Month, and I just poured myself 100% into that and kind of neglected all of the internet and everything else and just focused 100% on getting my book written. And that really was the right decision for me because, you know, I went about a week without getting any words written because of the issues involved and then had to make up that shortfall. And, you know, writing 50,000 words in 30 days is a bit of a tall order on the be in the best of times but yeah so i doubled down and i worked really really hard and as of the 29th i had hit my 50,000 word limit which made me very happy that i hit my target i hit it early for the first time there's only the third time ever that i've won nano that i won national novel writing month and by winning that means that you did an insane amount of writing in an insanely short period of time and your reward is a uh, badge you can share on social media, a certificate you can print out if you want, and the uh, relief of stress, the elation that comes with knowing that you did it. This is only the third time that I've ever actually finished a thirty, a fifty thousand word, the fifty thousand words in thirty days, and I actually did it early. I did it on the 29th day, which makes me really happy and kind of shows me that I might be able to do it quicker in future because you know. When I say I did it in 29 days, I, I really had about a week of not being able to get any writing done in the middle of that. So, you know, I, you know, 22 days, maybe, which is insane for me. That, that's faster writing than I've ever done. So Sanctify My Sins, which is the book that I'm writing right now, is not finished yet. It'll be finished probably by next Friday. If I keep on schedule, I, I've slowed myself down. I'm going to write one chapter a day only on weekdays. I'm giving myself weekends again, so I'll be able to relax. But, you know, it really was the right decision to keep myself focused and really striving towards a goal that I knew that I should be able to achieve because I'd done it twice before. And I'm sorry that I went away f for a couple weeks. <laughs> I really didn't mean for that to happen. As you know, we had already made plans to be doing weekly podcasts and I wanted to do them, but I I was in no fair mental state to talk to anyone, much less, you know, let's just say Thanksgiving was fun this year. Yeah. Anywho. So yeah. Um, hi, we're back. I'm back. And <laughs> Man, it so much has happened in the time since I went away. I really don't know what to talk about first. And so the first thing I'm actually going to talk about is I, I finally got my husband to read The Silmarillion. <laughs> Yay! Okay, so Brian finally read through The Silmarillion, which is amazing. And he now understands why I'm a Tolkien fan, because 
you know, he knows I'm not the biggest fan of the Lord of the Rings books or The Hobbit. And I mean, they're good books, don't get me wrong, but my fandom is very heavily rooted in the Silmarillion. I mean, that's why I love J.R.R. Tolkien so much. I think that that is a work of just sheer brilliance. And um, he now understands that. And yeah, it, it's honestly what I wish the upcoming Amazon Prime show was going to be. You know, I would love a Baron and Luthien series. I would love a War of Wrath series. Oh, for goodness sakes, I'd even take a, a series about Fingal. You know, my absolute dream would be about the fall of Numenor, because I think that that would give Game of Thrones a run for its money. I think it would be amazing. I think it would be so much fun, especially because the way the Silmarillion is written, there's a lot of gaps that really creative writers would be able to fill in and make powerful episodes that would keep even people like me, who have read the story many times and are very familiar with it, guessing what, what, what's going to happen next. But I'm going to try to talk Brian into coming on the show and doing a review of the Silmarillion. So um, for those of you who know him, you, uh, say a little word, because I think that that would be really fun to get him on here and actually have a little talk about, as he calls it, the book of many names. So many names. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of lot of names in the book. It's one thing Tolkien loved to do was name characters and places, and he was never happy with something only having one name. <laughs> but yeah, so that happened, and I'm very excited about that. We started watching Titans, and I am not going to do a full review of it until the season is over, but eh, it's... it's it gets better. It, it's a very slow boil kind of a show, and I think that's what it has against it. That's what I have against it, at least. That they've decided to release episodes on a weekly schedule rather than doing the Netflix model of just throwing everything up there all at once. And if it wasn't for the fact that I am enjoying reading DC Comics again, and hopefully they will continue building out the collection that they have available over there. I've been reading through Batwoman comics in what little free time I've had, um, which actually isn't that much. I'm only on issue like two or three. But I've been trying to read through Batwoman comics, and I'm planning to do a lot more to get caught up with that because I tried to read them, and, you know, life just gets away from you, and that's why I like these all-you-can-eat comic book services. And so if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't have stuck around for Titans because I'll be honest, the first couple episodes were not great, and... It's getting there. And I don't know if it's just that they're boiling the frog and I'm getting used to it, or if it's actually starting to become a better series, but it is it took way too long to get them together in one place, because they're going with the core Teen Titans group that you would expect. It's Raven, Robin, Beast Boy, and Starfire. And I, I like some of the things that they've done with them. I'm really curious what they're going to be doing with the Grayson's Robin, and he's one of the things that is carrying me through the show, because his relationship to Bruce Wayne is one that, while I don't expect to ever see Bruce Wayne in the show, because they've been very interesting, like, they've hired a body double for Bruce Wayne, I don't know if he's actually the actor that would eventually play him or not, but th there has been a foreboding shadow in some of the flashbacks of Bruce Wayne. But I, I'm curious where they're going with his story. I thought it was very interesting that they also introduced Jason Todd into it, um, which is not a spoiler. If you watch the show, there's actually an episode called Jason Todd. Um, so just looking at the episode list, I'm sorry, if it's the name of an episode, it's not a spoiler. A basic rule that I have on the, on life. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's gotten... Once everyone gets together, I think the story really gets started, and I kind of wish... They would have compressed maybe the first three or four episodes into one. I feel like there's a lot of filler in there where we we don't need some of it. You know, all of the weird stuff about Dick Grayson as a cop really doesn't make sense. The setup for the cult that's coming after Raven, because let's be honest, if you know anything about the Teen Titans, you know what's going on in Raven's storyline. It, it takes... It, yeah, they do some setup in the early episodes, but eh, it really doesn't take off until all four Titans are together. 
I do like the setup for Beast Boy. I am really curious what they're going to do with the Doom Patrol. You do get an episode titled Doom Patrol, which you meet the Doom Patrol. And we know that the next series that will be going up on the streaming service is Doom Patrol. So I'm assuming that's the cast that we're going to get. Um, I liked pretty much everyone but Chief. And yeah, hopefully they fix that before it goes to series. It's not so much the actor, it's the way he played the character. It felt like a weird knockoff of... He felt like... I can't remember the character's name right now. But the guy who put together the team on Alphas, he felt like a weird knockoff of him. Like he was almost doing an impersonation of that character. Like it was a weird fan film where they're like, what if the dude from Alphas was leading the Doom Patrol? In a strange way, it, it, it just it didn't jive for me. The other characters I really like. I really liked how they work, and it's fine. It's it's not as good as the. I, I would put it basically in the same bucket as last season's uh, CW shows. It's fine. I mean, there's nothing other than the slow pace at the beginning, and it really has a slow pace at the beginning, and uh, it's it's almost excruciatingly slow especially having to wait four episodes. And like I said, if I wasn't reading comics and my husband and I weren't so interested in, you know, DC stuff and getting to see live action and new DC stuff, we probably wouldn't have stuck with it. But it eventually got to a place where I'm interested and excited for episodes when they come out. So, eh. <laughs> it's not the best review I could give you. And I'm hoping that it has a payoff that will make everything up to this point worth it, but that's what we're going to have to wait and see. Because if it doesn't, then I don't know what I spent my time on. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Hopefully, in the end, it will be worth it. But until then, it's what we've got. It, I, I, I have a feeling that if it does get a second season, they will remedy a lot of the problems that it has. Because most of the problems that it has are related to the movies. Like, I feel like they didn't so much conceive this as something that this Robin would appear eventually in the DCEU movies, or maybe not any of these characters would appear in the DCEU movies, but kind of like the Netflix Marvel shows, that it happened kind of in that same world a little bit, because the first couple episodes are very, like, Zack Snyder, grim, dark for unnecessary reasons. And once they got together, they start having more fun. Beast Boy is a fun character that brought some levity to the show that the show really needed. Um, I I'm curious to see where it goes. And hopefully, hopefully it'll go somewhere good. So, what I really want to talk to everyone about right now is what in the world with Netflix and Marvel and this nightmare world that we are entering of siloed streaming services that each want to nickel and dime us to peak. Now, I feel like I'm partly responsible for all this. So I, I, I guess, suppose I should go into my little confession booth and just put it all. I'm a cord cutter. I've been a cord cutter, oh my goodness, for a very long time. I believe it was 2006? when we decided to just deal with what we could get via streaming. That feels right. It was when the first Apple TV came out. We were using it and a combination of other apps to just watch what was available in streaming. And at the time, we were complaining at how, about how expensive cable was and that we were paying for all these channels that we didn't want. And the solution to us at the time was to basically constantly say, why don't they let us just do a la carte? Just pay for the channels that we want, not pay for the channels we don't want, and then have at it. Because that seemed like a better idea, because th th there were only a few channels that we were watching at the time. Because, you know, like, right now, if I were to think about stuff that's on the TV, right, I watch Doctor Who, which I just buy the season pass just for it, because I know I'm going to probably end up rewatching it anyway. So I don't really need a BBC America app. I, we watch a lot of CW shows, and I would honestly pay for a CW app that didn't have any commercials. The commercials drive me crazy, especially since we're paying for a commercial free on Hulu, and they still put commercials in because, of course, they do. I just want to drive me batty. So I'd pay for a CW app and pay for Netflix because I'm currently paying for Netflix, and I watch a lot of shows there. 
I am one of the few people that pay for YouTube Red, and I do that just because I watch a lot of stuff on YouTube, and I don't want to have to deal with the commercials, because commercials just drive me batty. So this is a way I can support the creators that I like, and uh, not have to deal with the commercials. So yeah, we're actually debating whether or not we're going to keep our HBO subscription, because... Well, HBO has been rather lackluster for a while. We haven't really watched anything over there for quite some time, but that's a debate. We're definitely going to watch Game of Thrones when it back out on it. We, we signed up for CBS All Access when it was a thing, just to watch season one of Star Trek Discovery. But I actually went ahead and bought Star Trek Discovery when it came out to buy. That way I wouldn't have to, because I wanted to watch it again and I didn't want to have to pay a monthly fee to CBS for that honor. That way I can just watch it whenever I want to. Um, so, because I actually liked season, it infuriated me, but go back to previous episodes to see my rant there. And of course we're paying for um, DC Universe, but again, like I said, that's mostly for the comics. I, I There's not a lot of comics on there, but there are series that I want to get caught up on in there. So I mean, I'm enjoying that. But we asked for this, and now it's here, and it just feels like this nightmarish netherworld where, well, of course we're pro- we're going to pay for the Disney app because it's going to have, you know, Pablo Pascal playing the Mandalorian on the live-action Star Wars show, and I can't not watch that, and I'm actually getting the Cassian Ander show that I wanted, so that's definitely going to be something that I'm going to have to watch, especially since... Diego is coming back. Diego Luna is coming back for that. So, yeah, I'm going to watch that. And who knows what else is going to be over there? Because that's just the DC stuff. They're already talking about, like, a Loki show. Okay, so if that's Loki and that's Tom Hiddleston, I'm definitely going to want to watch that. And if Sebastian Stan and Anthony Mackie are going to be in whatever their Winter Soldier and the Falcon show is, definitely I want to watch that because, dude, I love them. So yeah, I'm going to probably pay for the Disney streaming app, whether I want to or not. And everybody's kind of spinning out like this. And to some degree, I don't have a problem with it. But it needs to have some semblance of order. Because I don't like putting all my Disney eggs in one basket, in a way. Because, yeah, of course, I'm, I don't want to pay extra for Marvel and Star Wars streaming apps. But... I'm already kind of doing that because I pay for Marvel Unlimited to read comics, you know, Marvel comics. It's one of the reasons why I'm paying for DC Universe, because I want to read the comics. So I'm going to be paying an extra Marvel subscription already just so I can have access to the comics unless those get somehow folded into the DC whatever, the, the Disney whatever it's going to be called. And then you have what to me feels like almost blatant sabotage of the last couple seasons of the of the Marvel shows on Netflix. And I really I really kind of mean that. I, I look forward to any postmortem that ends up getting done on these shows because I I really enjoyed them until I didn't. And it the way things are shaking out over there just feels weird. Because like Luke Cage, I loved season one. Season one was really good. Season two was pretty good. And then it got canceled. So, okay, no more Luke Cage. Well, that's probably because of the Marvel streaming app and they didn't want to renew a contract or something. I don't know. I, maybe it was the ratings, you know, number of people who streamed it. I, I, I don't. Really don't care. It, it got canceled. That's a bummer. I it didn't exactly love or really like Iron Fist Season 1. And Season 2, I thought, had a lot of problems, mainly around Danny Rand. But towards the end... I, it got interesting, and the idea of Colleen Wing, like if that became Daughters of the Dragons and it was Misty Knight and Colleen Wing, I would watch that show. So, oh, you have no idea. And maybe that will happen. I doubt it, but maybe. <sighs> but it, it got canceled after it finally got interesting. Like, finally, finally, he found a way to get my interest, and it goes away. Okay, well, that that that's a bummer. And Daredevil... I don't even know what season we're on. Is this three or four? Um, anyway, the most recent season of Daredevil, I couldn't finish. It, it was it was terrible. It was it was just and Daredevil was to me the most consistent of the shows. I really liked the first, I guess, three seasons that we had of it. I really liked the Punisher season. I'm looking forward to the Punisher Punisher show. Is that still happening? 
mean, I guess it's still happening. I haven't heard that it got canceled. But season, the last season of Daredevil was just terrible. I mean, just terrible. And I don't know how this happened. And I really mean that. Like, it's possible that they just gave them enough creative license that they were able to hang themselves. That that's that's always a possibility in these situations. That they just let them do what they thought was right and. They thought that this would be an interesting storyline and it would somehow be different from what we'd seen before, but uh, the villain, the, uh, 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 I don't know, maybe it would pay off. Brian keeps saying that we're going to finish that season at some point, but so far we haven't. And it was just terrible. And I, I, I'm not saying that Disney had them make specifically terrible shows so that when Mar- these Marvel characters or different Marvel characters show up on the Disney streaming app. They can go, look how much better our content is. Ah. I, I really wouldn't put much of anything past the mouse. I, I just feel like, I I don't know, maybe I just give people too much credit. Like, a show that's going good, especially like Daredevil. Like, I really liked Daredevil. And I was so excited for the new season. And I, I just, I don't see how a show does that badly without people trying to figure out how to make it do badly. It's it's kind of like Spider-Man 3, you know? How can we make this weirder? Well, let's let Tobey Maguire do his little dancing thing, and we'll let, you know, the Cameron Diaz... Was that Cameron? No. See, I can't even remember her name anymore. Sing. Sing. I used to like her. I liked her since she was in Interview with a Vampire. Now I can't even remember her name. Um, But you get my point. Like... They just stuffed that like let's just it's three so let's put three villains in here and not give any of them really any stories and make them boring and horrible like it almost felt like there was a concerted effort to destroy Spider-Man 3 so everybody could get out of their contract and do other things. I mean I know that's not probably not what happened that there was just too much ego involved and you know blah 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 but it ugh, the last season of Daredevil, it really felt like they were like, well, what can we do to make sure when this show gets canceled because we don't have the deal anymore and everything's going over to the Disney streaming app and that people won't care? Well, we'll make it as terrible as it could possibly be. And it really feels like what happened. It probably isn't. I'm probably just reading things into it that I shouldn't be because, I don't know, given the events of the last couple months, I've been a little tinfoil hatty with everything especially with a lot of the news that have been that's been coming out of the entertainment industry about this project that project and the other project and it's just been but i i don't understand how they could get as far off track as they were but you know in netflix credit to netflix credit you know when they announced that daredevil got canceled eh, i i really didn't care and of all of the shows on netflix that's the one that should have upset me because you you don't understand how much I liked the de- the Daredevil show. I really 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 liked it. Yeah, uh, I don't. Know. I just I just don't know. I guess maybe on our next episode when we talk about how you can do all this stuff in a much more interesting way. Maybe on Monday we'll talk about the new Shira and the Princesses of Power. Yeah, that'll uh, go over well. Spoiler: I liked it. So yeah. I don't know. I don't understand what's going on with all this, but I will, as always, be trying to find out. So thank you to everyone for your kind words and stuff over the period of time that I went away for um, sanity reasons. <laughs> you know, because, you know, life got weird. Um, I really do thank you. It's You guys are a great help to me. If you really want to be like a super help, share this podcast with people that you think will like and enjoy it. Um, I'm going to be trying this new format thing where we're going to be doing at least two segments because we now have, as you already heard, a sponsor for this podcast, which helps it make a bit of money, which is nice. <laughs> I mean, I really enjoy doing it and I love bringing the show to you, but it, it'd be nice to uh, get a little recompense for the time and effort that I do put into this show. So. We're going to be trying this new thing where I'm going to be doing several segments and, you know, divided by our sponsor message, and we'll see how it works. But, yeah, I'm probably going to go back to the daily format because I really do enjoy talking with everyone daily because, I don't know, it helps my sanity. 
And anything that helps my sanity is good. So if you know anybody who would like this podcast and the stuff that we talk about here, please share the podcast with them. If you don't know, just post me to your Facebook or your Twitter or your Tumblr or wherever great podcasts are listened to. It really will help me out a lot. Um, so thank you for that. If you would like to support me financially, you can head over to project, projectshadow.com and click on my Patreon link. I'm CE Dorset over on Patreon if you just want to go over there directly and support my Patreon. Um, as little as a dollar a month really does help out a lot. We've got a lot of stuff going on. I have two books in the hopper that are going to be coming out next year, and soon I'll start work on the third one because I'm hoping to get out three books next year, and that will be the whole Mask of the Gods trilogy that will be um, Crucify My Love, Sanctify My Sins, and Glorify My Name. And those will be coming out with their own podcasts on the side for audiobooks. And I'm really going to be doing a lot for that. So look look forward to that. I am. I'm very excited about this whole process. Um, but yeah, if you can support a, support the show with a couple dollars, either on Patreon or on the app that you're listening to me on right now, you'll either see in the show notes or on the app itself a support on Anchor button. You click that, you can support me at the $1, $5, $10 a month levels. That helps a ton. Fun. It really does. And thank you so much for even things. And yeah, I think that's about it. We'll be back to a much more normal episode on Monday. And I actually was going to wait till Monday to put out an episode, but I missed talking to you all. So I thought I would just go ahead and put out one tonight. So thank you all for listening, and I will see you on Monday. And until then, don't forget, have the fun.